In recognition of the 4-H centennial in 2002, the National Association of Extension 4-H Agents, National 4-H Council, and 4-H National Headquarters, USDA, partnered to create the National 4-H Hall of Fame. The purpose of the 4-H Hall of Fame is to recognize and celebrate 4-H volunteers, extension professionals, staff, donors, and others who have made a significant impact within the 4-H movement at the local, state, and or national levels. Each land-grant university may nominate one candidate per year, while the founding partners of the Hall of Fame may nominate up to three individuals for consideration. David and Sue Benedetti devoted many years to 4-H locally, nationally, and internationally. Each contributed as members, IFEs, and educators in their respective home states of Oregon and Wyoming through USDA and the National 4-H Foundation and internationally in India and other foreign ministries. David says 4-H was a calling and IFE was the inspiration that ignited his career choice that developed a lifelong vocation in international program development. While Sue's experiences through 4-H enabled her to teach and write youth development handbooks for international programs. Both David and Sue are 4-H Heritage Club members and co-founders of the National 4-H History Preservation Program. A quote written for Susan Halbert in her high school yearbook guided her extension career. It read, Give to the world the best you have, and the best will come back to you. These words directed Susan to focus her career on facilitating groups of all sizes, interests, skills, and cultural backgrounds to create positive experiences and opportunities for young people. She created youth programming in New York, Alaska, and at National 4-H Council. Susan served as the architect and facilitator of the 2002 research and strategic planning process that identified ways to improve youth development programs. Throughout his extension career, Greg Hutchins learned 4-H's foundation was not only in agriculture and family-based activities, but also encompassed strong values associated with public service and democratic practices. He realized that the potential impact of 4-H was much deeper than the classic public image of a county fair project. He believes 4-H is a program where youth of all abilities can find success. From county extension agent to assistant dean of cooperative extension and state 4-H youth development program director, Greg discovered that 4-H was a never-ending quest to help all to become better people. Denver Lope, LSU Ag Center's former vice chancellor and director of cooperative extension of 41 years, believed in youth. During his tenure, Denver encouraged all extension agents within the parishes to dedicate time teaching and training youth. Under his leadership, 4-H worked closely with the Louisiana Public School Board to incorporate 4-H into schools as a co-curricular opportunity, a partnership that remains strong today. Denver is fondly remembered as a person who always had a genuine smile on his face and would eagerly engage in a teachable moment during a 4-H event. Fondly known as Bubbly Bob, Bob Meadows served as the Virginia Cooperative Extension's Associate Director and State 4-H Leader. However, Bob is most recognized as a camp enthusiast as he strengthened the educational program at Virginia's Airfield Camp, led a statewide effort for all six Virginia 4-H camps to become accredited by the American Camp Association, and directed the National Camping Institute. Furthermore, he established Virginia as an international leader in 4-H camping. A camping expert, Bob provided insight and advice to more than 23 states related to 4-H camping and risk management. A trailblazer in volunteer development, Theron McKinney was one of the first full-time volunteer specialists in the nation. One of his first goals was to double the volunteers' current involvement. He trained more than 26,000 volunteers to deliver educational programming. Theron's volunteer leadership models were adapted and implemented by several states. Then, under his leadership, the empowered North Carolina Volunteers established the 4-H Volunteer Association. Employed first with the American Youth Foundation, Theron remained faithful since both programs focused on youth leadership, and to encourage 4-H participation at AYF conferences, he founded a scholarship. 
Living her dream is what Darlene Baker Millard, the Arkansas 4-H state leader, did throughout her career and even now into retirement. At age 10, she wanted to become an extension agent working with 4-H because 4-H had given her the platform to shine. As a very shy Arkansas farm girl, Darlene had county extension agents and 4-H volunteers that believed in her and provided opportunities for her to grow. Darlene excelled and doors opened from rural Arkansas to world travel. Through 4-H, Darlene learned you cannot always win, but you can learn from your experiences. Arthur Buddy Nemitz was invested in New Jersey 4-H. He came full circle from a member to volunteer to contributor. During his teen years, Buddy discovered the electric projects that led to his career as an electrician. He used these life skills learned in 4-H and gave back to the 4-H program through donating his time, teaching youth, repairing camp facilities, and chaperoning award trips. 4-H impacted him, and Buddy in turn impacted New Jersey 4-H. Buddy's leadership motivated both the local and state 4-H programs by extending youth-adult partnerships, raising funds, and enhancing camp capital improvement projects. Jerry Parsons' 34-year extension career expanded into three cooperative extension services, Iowa, North Carolina, and Kansas. His leadership in 4-H recognition and incentives laid the foundation for recognition programs that continues to be used in 4-H programs across the nation. First introduced to cooperative extension service as a student needing a summer job, Jerry learned quickly and found a career in extension. Later, he spent time in North Carolina and Kansas teaching. Returning to Iowa in 1980 as the state 4-H leader for 4-H and youth programs, Jerry's leadership reached 132,000 young people and 10,000 volunteers. The first born of 12 children, Jim Phelps, grew up in Kentucky's Appalachian region. He attended Berea College where he worked to earn his tuition. Jim majored in agriculture science and returned to the Appalachian region to make a difference in the life of others that shared his similar background. Jim dedicated 40 years in Knott County Extension and the community assisting with the raising more than $10 million for improved infrastructure including roads and bridges. Jim served as the first NAE 4HA historian. He spent countless hours to organize and secure documents concerning the early history of 4-H and of the association. A Wyoming 4-H alumna, Marie Rice co-founded Kodiak 4-H through the Alaska Cooperative Extension Service in 1972. Since its inception, her seven children, foster children, grandchildren, and countless others have been active members under her watchful eyes. She continues to serve the club as a volunteer leader. An elementary teacher and counselor, Marie's influences of 4-H and education provided her the opportunity to serve on a National Department of Education Ag in the Classroom team and Alaska's Governor's Task Force team. In 2019, Marie was honored as Agriculture Person of the Year by the Alaska State Farm Bureau. For the past 30 years, Oregon youth have been learning life skills in natural sciences, leadership, and communications guided by Sherm and Faye Saley. A 10-year alumna of Oregon 4-H, Faye met Sherm at Oregon State University while studying entomology. Sherm learned how 4-H was integrated into Faye's life, so he embraced 4-H's experiential learning concepts too. A career Air Force family, the Saleys engaged and invested in several states 4-H programs teaching youth about natural sciences, especially entomology and forestry. Today, the Saleys continue teaching by using their 45-acre tree farm for hands-on learning. Glenn Snyder Jr.'s influence in 4-H spanned more than three decades providing leadership for West Virginia's youth as a county and state educator. His background was in agriculture. From growing up on a farm, earning university degrees, and gaining first-hand experiences, he used the knowledge gained to positively transform 4-H and FFA agricultural projects. Glenn believes 4-H is a way of life, having influenced his family for more than 70 years, first his mother and then his own family. He believes he was blessed throughout his career because he did what he loved and loved what he did. Bill Svensgaard says growing up on a farm near Canada and away from the outside world, 
4-H became my link to a wider multicultural array of people. As a young 4-H member, he remembers being a delegate on the Minnesota-Mississippi Exchange before civil rights, hosting an iffy from Jordan, and traveling to Switzerland as an iffy. For him, this travel opened the world. 4-H influenced him throughout his career, directing his paths for experiential learning. Bill served as an urban 4-H agent, educator, and developed 4-H clubs with underserved audiences and developed the Metro 4-H Art Force. A career described as a journey in lifelong learning, connections, and partnerships is how Kendra Wells remembers her 34 years with Maryland Extension. Her work was grounded in the belief that youth, volunteers, and communities possess the knowledge and leadership skills to create programs and opportunities that meet their interests and needs. As Maryland's 4-H military liaison, Kendra coordinated outreach programs for youth in active duty, guard, and reserve military families, along with Army and Navy youth development programs in Europe. A member of the National 4-H History Preservation Steering Committee, she assisted with the Voices of 4-H History Celebration. Helene Zoig has been the rock of the Hawaii 4-H program for four decades. While the 4-H program has gone through some rough times in the past, Helene's foundational presence assisted Hawaii 4-H through the difficult times. Helene's contributions improved the Hawaii community that led to activities and outreach programs for the underprivileged and mentally and physically handicapped, which are still impacting people today. Her pioneering spirit and can-do approach to challenges benefited countless individuals through Hawaii's 4-H program, including starting the first urban 4-H clubs, establishing clubs for handicapped youth, and coordinating the Japanese exchange. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the National 4-H Hall of Fame ceremony scheduled for October 2nd was postponed. The 4-H Hall of Fame Committee of the National Association of Extension 4-H Youth Development Professionals has developed this video to honor and celebrate the National 4-H Hall of Fame Class of 2020. We thank the laureates for their dedication and significant contributions to the 4-H Youth Development Program and recognize each of them for their accomplishments in the areas of citizenship, leadership, and character, and the impact they have had in growing the 4-H program from the local level to around the world. Congratulations to the class of 2020.